So welcome uh, once again to one of our um, uh, dialogues at uh, the ORF studios from the sidelines of the Raisina Dialogue 2018. Uh, we have looked at a number of issues in, this, uh, in, the, in these dialogues and now uh, for this edition we have Dr. Lailufur Yasmin from the Department of International Relations, University of Dhaka, who is with us um, here and we will be looking at South Asia, India-Bangladesh relations and the future of uh, geopolitics and international relations in this part of the world which is passing through some very interesting times. Uh, Dr. Yasmin, uh, how do you look at, uh, let's start from Bangladesh, okay. uh, how do you look at the, this year in particular in, in Bangladesh, which is very significant politically uh, and, and, and its impact on, on Bangladesh's foreign policy? Just, just a few brief points if you can make about that. Uh, the, this is a very interesting year for Bangladesh, as you've said, because uh, we're expecting a national election, parliamentary election, some, somewhat at the end of this year uh, or early next year. Uh, so uh, this is um, sort of uh, affecting or uh, sort of energizing the domestic politics. And of course, it has a big uh, impact on international politics as well, because uh, much will depend on, you know, at the south uh, eastern corner of Bangladesh, how we are dealing with the Rohingya refugee issue. Uh, the local community, their perception about uh, you know how they are being treated by the national government. Because from the center, things may look uh, quite easy, but if you talk with the people uh, over there, they're they're quite uh, not happy about uh, maybe a lot of things. Uh, so th those are the things, and also in in terms of uh, domestic, uh, uh, some other some other issues, um, some a few other economic issues. I think it, it is quite a challenging year for Bangladesh. Uh, yes, and I think uh, you know Bangladesh has been doing relatively well economically, uh, and uh, with all its problems, um, uh, your prime minister has been able to give it some stability over the last ten years almost. So, uh, uh, and if you recall, uh, the last elections were pretty dramatic. Uh, are you expecting something equally dramatic this year, or, or do you think that the political consensus has developed that uh, stability is more important, and therefore parliamentary elections should go smoothly? Uh, in fact, yes, this is a fear that uh, both, uh, you know, internally as well as externally uh, was whether uh, it will be an all-party uh, election, uh, as we have not seen happening um, during last time, as we have mentioned. Um, however, uh, the recent, uh, some of the city election, uh, city corporation election, mayoral election, it has reflected that uh, pro probably it has given hope to the opposition party that, yeah, there are chances for them as well. Uh, and the, uh, one of the major uh, uh, policies political opponents of Ahmadi PNP, they have declared that at any cost they are going to participate in the election, which is a very positive news for us. Uh, so we are hoping that it will be again an all-party uh, sort of uh, election uh, this year. Oh, so that's, that's great news, that I think, for, for, for the democracy, yeah. not only in Bangladesh, Absolutely. for the region. Uh, and, I, and, and so I, what impact I, do you think uh, uh, it will have on uh, Bangladesh's foreign policy, particularly if, you, if you're looking at one party dominance over the last decade and if that dominance shifts, if the, there's a shift to the other side or to a different set of actors, uh, where, where particularly will be the, you know, the most important inflection point? Do you think it is going to be Rohingyas towards China, towards Bay of Bengal? What is, what is the larger issue, largest issue or biggest issue you, you would okay. say? Okay. Uh, one, one thing I'd like to point out, yes, it was a one-party dominance over the last 10 years. Uh, technically right, but there are some of the issues where there were already national consensus. I'm not talking about political consensus per se, but national consensus, for example, for China. Yes, from all quarters, we want some kind of uh, relationship, better relationship with China. We see China as a development partner. Then about many other issues, actually, despite some might think it's a homeric driven agenda, but it, it was, there was some kind of national consensus. Right now, yes, the Rohingya issue is the biggest challenge for us. Uh, we are hoping that there will be some some kind of repatriation. However, uh, given the past experiences with the same issue that we had to deal since late 70s, um, I personally am not very hopeful that it will this will work out and this could be the biggest challenge not only this year but for later as well. Uh, I would like to push you on the China question partly because I think uh, we are here in Delhi and this is important for us to understand. Um, there is a sense in Delhi that uh, you know uh, that the present Prime Minister has been able to have a more effective balancing uh, policy towards India and China than her predecessor. Mm -hmm. Would you, first of all, would you concur with that assessment? And secondly, 
uh, what are the implications uh, for a change in government in that regard? If if the government changes, then do you do you see uh, a marginalization of India as some in India feared that a different political dispensation would almost inevitably mean India's you know marginalization in the scheme of things? Because we have seen Indo-Bangladesh relations going through a very good phase, a very healthy phase over the last decade. Um, in fact, you know uh, there, there are this saying in in Bangladesh as well that one political party leans too much towards steals too much towards mm. India, and the other one doesn't. Yeah. However, if you do some kind of academic research, you would see the commissions like JRC, Joint Reports Commission, or JEC, Joint Economic Commission. They have actually performed well under BNP instead of Army League. Uh, on the other hand, there is, of course, there's a very good relations for the past 10 years. Um, uh, and uh, Army League has been able to maintain that very tricky balance between the two. One is a security provider, the other one is my development partner. Um, I do not think, uh, given the kind of institutional structures are set up, I do not think this can be uh, changed much, much uh, even if there's a change in government in Bangladesh because th there's this acceptance in, in several uh, sectors. Um, uh, if you're talking about track one diplomacy, talk, uh, talking about track 1.5 diplomacy, then exchange of academics and there are other a lot of other issues. So it, relationships are much more institutionalized than before. If it's not institutionalized, you can overthrow it overnight. Uh, but if it's not, then you must have to carry on. Like, yes, I think that's, that's a fair point in terms of you know foreign policies do tend to um, move into, of, yeah, there's a continuity in, in, in many yes. ways. Uh, I think uh, two points before, before we end this conversation. One is uh, you know looking at the larger sort of global and regional realities. So one problem, you know, we have discussed Rohingyas, but I think uh, the, the problem is somewhat related but also distinct is this problem of uh, extremism. And uh, the challenge that perhaps Bangladesh faces I alongside with India and other, uh, other countries is how do you keep yourself isolated from the rising tide of uh, IS, for example, ISIS, uh, Islamic State, whatever you might want to call it, uh, and a growing number of uh, I the growing influence of this, this organization on the psyche of, of a large section of our populations. What what has Bangladesh done uh, and potentially uh, do you see that working or do you, th do you see a lack of regional cooperation perhaps hampering that? Um, I, I think with uh, violent extremism I would like to tag in the Rohingya issue as well because I have visited some of the camps, refugee camps and when you talk with the people the desperation because they don't see any future for themselves and that's potentially a breeding ground for you know, uh, sort of uh, getting terrorists or those uh, extremists uh, into action. So that is one area I think we need to sort of connect, first of all. So unless th this is like we have our other problems with related to extremism, rise of extremism, but that has been de dealt with very boldly by the government. And uh, the last uh, um, several months, we have not seen this happening because of uh, not only the government has a zero tolerance policy, but also the effective use of the law enforcement agencies. So this has created and the wide network of intelligence, the wide network of you know dissemination of information and in the college level, school level, university level, we have students bodies who are taking care of this. We have students forums. Um, Bangladesh has been participating in a, a American government project on creating Facebook awareness on uh, among the among the students and in fact this was there was a global competition where Dhaka University stood first. Uh, that, that was something and so the, the students in the universities, schools and colleges, they are aware. So there's a sort of community sort of involvement, uh, it, it, it no longer rests on the government to take care of it. We also take care of it uh, in educating our children and giving more time to them. That has been an, uh, an area that we have not thought about before, looked before. So it's, it's a multifaceted sort of cooperation, uh, sort of informal cooperation if I may say it. Uh, but I would again stress is the Rohingya issue and the, and the instability in that region. Uh, that may be potentially another sort of tinderbox for producing violent extremism. Yes, and I think we, are, we have to look, watch this uh, very, very carefully over the, over the coming years. Uh, finally, I think my question has to inevitably do with SARC and um, the, f the future of regional integration. Because uh, in India, there is a vigorous debate about the future of SARC and whether we need to look at things differently, whether we now need to focus our energies on something like BIMSTEC, the Bay of Bengal community. Uh, the Bay of Bengal is a geographic space where perhaps the actors can come together towards more productive, forward-looking, very specific operational uh, cooperation. Uh, what is the sense in Bangladesh that uh, 
is, is that assessment valid that look India, Pakistan, they continue to fight that for uh, SARC has inevitably not worked to the expectations uh, but therefore we need to move forward. But I, and I ask you this because Bangladesh has a specific, uh, a special uh, you right. know, relationship with SARC. It's our baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. so I think uh, what's the sort of, give me a sense of the local uh, discussion on uh, SARC and regional integration in particular. Um, I see those two as different issues. So they are connected but somewhat different because as I said, uh, SARC being Bangladesh's baby, we, we feel passionately about it and we think that uh, despite uh, divergences between India and Pakistan, I think some, some way or the other we need to sort of make SARC work. And there are, uh, we are not only talking about holding summits, we are not only talking about, you know, uh, the political sort of uh, uh, any other summit or any other sort of um, uh, meetings, but there are many other areas, for example, in, in development of human resources in development of uh, SARC uh, games. Uh, there are other non-traditional areas where SARC is functioning pretty well actually. Um, a few of my students, they have done their thesis also in developing you know, those, those issues, what are the other areas that SARC can really contribute. So uh, I, I would still suggest and uh, as I hear from my other colleagues in my department that yes, SARC can still be saved. Maybe it cannot be as energized or as, as effective as other organizations. But then Beamstick or uh, Bay of Bengal cooperation, this has another value for us because this lets us use our seaports. Uh, we are building two seaports. I think uh, the third one will be soon be, will start um, you know, work for. So we, we have this you know, uh, so potential to the Bay of Bengal, um, which, uh, which has given Bangladesh a, a different kind of geostrategic leverage. Uh, so I, I believe so Beamstick and uh, Bay of Bengal growth uh, or even BBIN, th these have specific values for Bangladesh. We we are certainly working hard to make this work. Um, uh, Bimstek had its 20th anniversary last year. Uh, we have its uh, secretariat in our uh, country, in the, in the capital city, Dhaka. So we are really working hard for them. But we still believe that, you know, uh, instead of killing uh, SARC, maybe we can think of uh, some other issue areas where SARC can still be very effective. Yes, on that uh, very positive note, uh, I think uh, it's, it was wonderful to have a conversation with you on the region and perhaps uh, a conversation about the differences that is, that is still persist in the region and some of the common complementarities that we can tap into is, is the way to go forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Yasmin. And thank, thank you so much for inviting me.